Rightio, another quickie from Witsit's debate the other day, and in this one he just makes up some rubbish about how reflections can only happen on perfectly flat surfaces. All right, let's go, bro. Um, actually, this right here is a specular reflection. Any convexity or concavity of the water, if it was curving, you wouldn't be able to get a specular reflection because it cause what's, uh, uh, will cause what's called a diffused reflection. Seriously, bro? You're an adult that's never seen specular reflection off a curved surface? Like, why would we bother listening to your waffle on about relativity and interferometry when you can't get basic shit like this right? And it was pretty easy to find the source for this photo. Uh, Witsit has obviously typed in lake reflection into Google, and the first hit is from Lake Matheson in New Zealand, and it's looking at Mount Cook and Mount Tasman in the background. And I dare say most of us who graduated primary school know that if there is no wind, then there are no ripples on the surface and you'll get a perfect reflection. You don't need a flat surface, you just need a smooth surface. So just for shits and giggles, uh, what I'm going to do is model this in my ray tracer, both on a globe and on a flat earth, and both with and without waves. And if you take a really close look at the reflection of the mountain in this photo, uh, you'll see that there are some tiny ripples in it, which tells you that there was a very light wind on the day. Uh, obviously in my ray tracer, I can completely remove that. And here is the result. Uh, this is what it would look like if we just took the erect image uh, and have a perfectly smooth surface to reflect off. Uh, I'm sure there's no complaints yet. And here's the Povray code that produced this image. Uh, I'll post the code in my GitHub if anyone wants to play with it. Uh, it should work straight out of the box, uh, but hit me up in Discord if you want some help getting it running. So we're actually gonna start from the bottom. Uh, we're going to add a simple cube to the scene. And on the surface of that cube, we're going to put the erect image uh, on the surface of it. Uh, then the translate command pushes it back 20 something kilometers. And then the scale command makes it approximately as wide as it should be in reality. So this section uh, describes the surface of the Earth. Uh, obviously, to get this image, I'm using a flat Earth, uh, and we'll get to that in a second. But the main part is this section called finish. And you can see it's a perfectly reflective surface, but it doesn't reflect any ambient light, uh, nor does it have any diffuse reflection. So they're both set to zero. Uh, now this part should be pretty self-explanatory. Uh, I've declared the flat Earth as a simple plane that's normal to the y-axis, and I've declared globe Earth to be a sphere with a radius of 6371 kilometers, uh, and then moved it down so that the observer is at 000 and is standing on top of the ball. Too easy. All right, so let's see what it looks like when I switch out flat Earth from that middle section and replace it with globe Earth. And here it is, uh, almost exactly the same as the previous one, uh, but this is a curved surface. And there would be absolutely no way for anyone who was just eyeballing it to tell the difference, uh, but for the fact that there is a tiny white line running through the middle of the image. And the reason that tiny white line is there is because this is rendered on a sphere which has a horizon, and that horizon is below eye level. So. If I wanted to, I could have shifted that little cube down just a little bit so that it's touching the surface of the sphere. And I could even tilt it back a little bit, but it would be completely indistinguishable from the image rendered with a flat earth. Uh, but I like leaving that little white line in there uh, because it tells you that this is a globe render uh, and not a flat earth render. Anyway, now let's get to what Witsit actually meant. Uh, which is that you can't get perfect mirror images when there are waves on the surface of the water. Uh, and of course, we're going to render that on both a flat earth and on a globe. And the way we simulate waves in Povray is to make the surface bumpy. Uh, and when the surface is really bumpy, then light bounces off in all different directions and you get this awesome wave effect, uh, which personally I think is incredibly realistic uh, for such an old school ray tracer like Povray. And here it is rendered on a globe, uh, which you can see again, because it has that white line. Uh, if, and if I remove that white line, 
it would be utterly indistinguishable from the flat earth render. Uh, so there you go, Witsit spouting absolute rubbish as usual. Uh, you got debunked, bro. Uh, and while I'm at it, I may as well debunk the, the rather silly Fleurf claim that these sorts of images, uh, where the, the sun's reflection makes that line towards you, uh, can only work on a flat earth and can't work on a globe. Uh, I've never really understood why they think that, uh, but let's model it anyway. So here's a render on a flat plane. Very, very pretty. And here it is on a globe. Uh, if you blinked, then you probably missed the only difference, and that was the teeny tiny horizon drop. Uh, again, indistinguishable to the naked eye. Uh, as with the, the Lake Matheson stuff, uh, this code will be in GitHub if you want to play around with the pretty colors. Anyway, that's all for today. Bye!